Hello once again everybody and welcome to the Mark Rick Show, presented by Williamson Automotive Group. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr. and University of Miami head coach Mark Rick. And coach, welcome to the show and quite a start. A great win against FAMU. It was a good start. It was great uh, rolling into the stadium and seeing all the tailgating going on. And uh, the cane walk was tremendous. Just an awesome amount of fans and family members. And, and uh, I know our players enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And, uh, and then going in there, seeing the students were already kind of, they were in there early, ready to go. It was great. You know, we had the band of the hour fired up too. I mean, the cheerleaders were ready. It was just a great, a great day, great evening. Coach, talk about the energy that, that, that you felt when you came in and how that invigorates the, yeah. the players. I, you've heard, I've heard some yeah, comments you know, about them. Yeah, I don't know if the fans really understand how much it means to the players to have that kind of reception. Just to, to see, again, everybody there early, everybody tailgating, everybody having a good time. And then, the, the, you know, when you walk through the cane walk with all the fans and, and the excitement that, they're, that you see in them, it, it can't help but make you excited and, and get your blood pumping the way, in, in a good, positive way. We were talking, uh, Don and I, about the stadium, and uh, I thought the stadium looked magnificent, and uh, I know you didn't know really what it looked like before that, but it seems like it's going to be a really nice home field advantage. Oh, there's no doubt. I think the noise level, the players keep saying how much different the, the volume of the, of the sound is different, because even when we went there, you know, Sunday before the first game, uh, we were able to go in there and we just we did what we call Miami Jacks, and we'll call out, mm -hmm. you know, like we did we did back in our day, remember that? <laughs> Correct. M I A M I M I A M I Miami, you know, Miami who Miami who, you know. But anyway, but they were doing that and and you it was just so loud. Just our team alone in the empty stadium, it was so loud. And then. Uh, you put the you know the fans in there it's it's just uh, really good what was the response from the recruits i know you're gonna have recruits at every game but i mean where they're sitting and and oh the, yeah the, the, well the facilities the first thing is you know they get to go hang out and club live for a while you know <laughs> before uh, before the game starts so that's nice and uh, you know we're able to feed them there and get them refreshments and all that and, the, and our coaches our assistant coaches go up there and spend time with them until it's time to go to pregame warm-up and then when the pregame warm-up happens, then they, they come down on the field and watch pregame warm-up and all that kind of deal. And and uh, it works out beautifully. And then at halftime, they're allowed to be there too. Um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great venue. I mean, it, there's no place in America that has, you know, their players hanging out at a place like that. For you, Coach, once you got out through the smoke, we did have one casualty, by the way, going through the smoke. Sebastian went down. Oh boy! Did yeah. I? Yeah. That's why I, I didn't want to be in the front. <laughs> I didn't want to be in the front because I didn't want to get trampled. Yeah. And uh, so I stayed off to the side and and tried to let everybody get out of there and let the smoke clear a little bit. So the experience pays so, off. Yeah, I'm like I, I'm not going to get run over. And uh, I've seen it happen. And so, uh, it wasn't going to be me. Sebastian may have lost the wing, but that's another story. Um, but once the game unfolded, here you are on the sidelines coaching your alma mater, calling plays for all your, your alma mater. It's your team. You're surrounded by the orange and green. Right. Was there any thought yeah, about well, that in your mind? not really. Yeah. I mean, I was just focused on calling, calling a game. game. But it's, and I'll say this, it, it's our team. It's, it's not my team. It's, it's, it's the university's team. It's the, it's the community's team. It's the, it's the coaching staff's team. It, it's everybody. There, there's so many people it takes to, to do great things. But I'm, you know, I am, the head coach and I do have a lot of responsibility but you know when you hire good people and you and they're highly motivated and, and very competent you know good things happen. University of Miami is a community team right we're not a we're not a college town so to oh, speak that's right. so it really uh, has been turned into yeah. a community team. Yeah it belongs to the city of Miami this this team belongs to everybody who, who wears the U. All right now let's take a look at the highlights from last week's game against FAMU the highlights are brought to you by UL Sports Medicine We'll get you back in the game.
Welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, everyone, presented by Williamson Automotive Group. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr. Coach, let's get right into the ball game. Brad Kaya, four touchdown passes, tied a career high, outstanding game by Brad and your entire offense against FAMU. Uh, I, I thought he did a really good job. There was very few issues. There was uh, maybe one run check that he might should have gone this way instead of that way. And even that was a little bit debatable. But if you're cutting hairs, it, he probably should have sent the run to the other direction. But other than that, he got us in the right run game every time. Um, he, I don't know if he's ever made a mistake uh, in his in his past progressions. He knows exactly where to go with the ball. And he missed, he missed, you know, that one scramble he probably could have hit in the Joku. And that post throw to Amon Richards, if he had hit him on the dead run, it probably would have scored. Certainly could have been caught. But uh, other than that, he played really well. Three backs all go over 100 yards for you. Had to be a good combination between the running backs and the offensive line. Right, good blocking up front with the line and the tight ends mm -hmm. and the fullbacks and the wide receivers. I mean, everybody's got to block. And, and when you block everybody uh, except for the ones that you can't get to, usually you're, you're not blocking the end man on the line. If you're running this way, usually the end man on the line you don't block. And hopefully the, the fake by the quarterback holds him and then maybe a deep safety you don't block. So, you know, if you can get through that line of scrimmage and everybody's blocking who they're supposed to, and then all, all you have to do is have the, the, the back make one safety miss, you got a chance to go to the house like on, on Gus's play. We blocked everybody. Safety had no prayer, and uh, he was off to the races. Coach, you went in and you had three starters that are freshmen at linebacker. I know you had a chance to critique them and watch the tape. What yeah. would you, how, what's your report on them? They played well. They they played um, very physical. That's one thing about those guys. They'll they'll strike you. I mean, that, and the, that's the number one criteria for a linebacker. You know, will you will you hit somebody? Will you, you know, uh, play the game the way it should be played in that regard? And sometimes you get a little over aggressive, and a play action pass may get somebody by you here and there. And if you're not, you know, being real disciplined with your eyes, I think that's the one thing. They were probably too aggressive at times, and and because of that, we had a couple, you know, a couple balls went down the middle a couple times. You know, I think our linebackers should have played that a little bit better. But other than that, they got after it pretty good. 2.9 <clears throat> yards per carry for your, uh, oh, no, 2.9 yards per play is all your defense allowed. That's a pretty good number. Oh, that's a great number. And I think we kept them under a couple hundred yards. And they probably had, what, 65 plays or something like that. I don't know what it was. I mean, they might have they might have got to 70. I don't know. But... Uh, no, I mean, hardly anything broke outside. Like, you know, you always talk about defensively to, to set the edge, meaning just somebody on the defense has got to turn a play that's trying to go wide inside to the pursuit of the defense. And I think only one time we didn't set the edge well enough and a guy bounced outside on a third and medium that he barely got a first down. But for the most part, we set the edge and then everybody was pursuing and doing a good job of trying to knock it out. Coach Diaz has talked time and time again through the spring and the fall about getting across the line of scrimmage, resetting the defensive line's right. feet, 15 tackles for loss. So that's, right. a, that's a good number. Well, and it's an indication of how we want to play the game, how we do want our down linemen to penetrate. We do, we'll put them in the gap. We're shooting gaps. And we're not necessarily you know, trying to get in the middle of a blocker and play this side or that side. We're just, we're just going. And uh, when, you, when you create a new line of scrimmage, in their backfield, you, you disrupt their blocking schemes and you, you get those tackles for loss. Special teams had a special teams uh, touchdown, the punt return. They had a blocked punt. Pat Bethel gets in there, blocks a punt, and then they also had trouble on one of the exchanges. So some of the pressure, I think, also affected their punter. Right. He dropped one. He, he pretty much shanked one. Um, you know, we did have an issue at the end of the game where we, we allowed a block. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought it was more of an effort issue, and it was really more of an assignment issue. We, we didn't really block it the way it should have been blocked. But that's a focus issue. I mean, we've, there was nothing you know, brand new that we hadn't seen before. So you know, that's, on, that's on us as coaches, not getting them prepared to, to take care of business. But um, you know, we covered kicks, you know, a bunch of kicks. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the furthest one out maybe to the 22-yard line. Right. Everything else was inside the 20. 
Where were you at conditioning wise? Did they did they pass that test on what you got uh, out? Everybody, it was pretty good. I mean, it was it was hot. It was muggy. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, I think everybody was you know was getting fatigued throughout the game. Both teams were no huddling, and and so everybody gets a little bit gassed. Um, but uh, you know, I don't think anybody cramped. I don't think there's a lot of cramping going on. I didn't see. Mm-hmm. No one had an IV or anything like that. They, like you, you'll have a lot of times. In the first game, with all that nervous energy, I'd say we're in, I'd say we're in very good shape. I don't know if we're the best conditioned team in America, but we're pretty darn close. All right, we will continue with University of Miami head coach Mark Rick on the Mark Rick Show, presented by Williamson Automotive Group. Welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, presented by Williamson Automotive Group. This week, FAU comes to Hard Rock Stadium, a 6 p.m. kickoff, and coach their experience on both sides of the ball. This is going to be quite a challenge. Very well coached. You know, you watch their tape, and I'm watching mostly defense, uh, getting the game plan together for our for our offense. But they they play hard. They're physical. They are disciplined in what they do. Uh, they don't do a whole lot, but. Usually those are the best defenses ever. Matter of fact, when I was coaching at Florida State against Miami, the greatest defenses I have ever coached against were at Miami, and they ran basically one front and a couple coverages. You know, they they had a little variance here and there, but they just lined up and whipped you. And uh, these guys uh, really know how to play the game. FAU, they want to run a lot of plays on offense. Want to, as we see in college football around. Um, as you prepare for it or look at this game, does it affect how you want the tempo to go in terms right. of how you want to run your offense, whether it's fast or slow right. it down? Well, the one good thing about if you go with tempo, if you have a fast pace, you, when it comes to a one-minute drill, you're not going to panic. You're used to going no huddle. But the, you can go as slow as you want to. Or just like in the second half, in the fourth quarter, we just got in the huddle and we went, we just – use as much clock as possible to, to run the ball and, and eat up clock and finish the game. So you can always slow down, but uh, when you go fast, uh, it helps our defense to prepare for teams like FAU that want to go very fast. If, if we just huddled all spring long, all fall law, long, and then, and then if you're going to ask the defense to get the scout team to go fast, you, you can't hardly go fast enough with the scout team. So now your defense is not used to going fast. Even the, even the coordinator is not used to calling plays quickly or calling defenses quickly, and it becomes a shock to your system where now if a team goes fast, we'll be able to handle it because we've seen it in practice, and it, it really helps. Coach, how do you handle <clears throat> the communication from the box or down to you now when, when you talk about tempo? Right. I mean, you used to, everybody used to take the full amount of time to get it done and oh, yeah. can signal it in and change the plays and right. no more. No, you have to uh, do most of your talking in between series with the coaching staff about what, what's been happening and what we need to do next time we're in this formation or even the field position like uh, Florida and them on the back side of the 50 were play, was playing mostly uh, what we call quarters coverage. And when we cross the 50, they're more apt to be in a one high situation. So and that was something that, you know, actually, you know, John was up there uh, – being able to communicate during the game. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times in the middle of a series, somebody's like saying it's, you know, second and one on the left hash. Or sometimes the ball is like almost in the middle. Mm-hmm. And it's, if it's close to the left hash, I need to know. If it's close to the right hash, I need to know. Sometimes it's hard for me to see from the sideline. So there's a lot of communication going on. And then of course, there's an there's a offensive line of communication. There's a defensive line of communication. There's a third button I can push on my headset where it's all special team stuff going on. And uh, so a lot of things happening. Uh, when the defense is on the field, the offensive coaches are on, the, on their uh, sets talking about what they saw and, and, you know, how we need to block something next time around. So it's just nonstop. Now, I will say in this game, Fans might not have known it, but there was a moment where we had to take all our headsets off. You guys may we have saw seen that, that yeah. and, and let the fans know. But uh, what happened was Florida and M's headsets didn't work. And by rule, uh, if they can't communicate on the headset, we've got to take ours off. So we had to take ours off for almost a full quarter. So, so how did that change? Well, 
fortunately, I'm on the ground, and I'm right. calling the game from the ground. You know, if the coordinator was upstairs calling the game, <laughs> and then it was like, Shh, somebody on the ground has got to call the game, you know, and it would have been me. <laughs> but uh, now I'm prepared to do it, so it's a lot better. All right, Coach, thank you very much, and the best of luck against the Owls. And, Don, when we come back, we'll take a closer look at FAU as we continue on the Mark Rick Show, presented by Williamson Automotive Group. Welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, everyone, presented by Williamson Automotive Group. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., Saturday night, Miami and FAU, 6 o'clock kickoff from Hard Rock Stadium. This is going to be a good ball game. FAU is going to come in with a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, oh, they will, Joe. As I mentioned earlier in the show, it's a bit of a rivalry game. A lot of these players have played against each other since Pee Wee League, and there's going to be a lot of competition. And we need to solicit the fans' help again. Everybody we talked to this whole week, it was so important for every player on the bus when they got to the stadium to go through Kane's Walk and have all that excitement. And it, it just juiced up the whole crowd and juiced up the whole team. Uh, the quarterback Driscoll comes back. He's the starter. We saw him last year. He uh, hurt the, uh, the University of Miami early in the game. Then the Canes caught up to him. I was impressed with him. I was impressed with his arm last year. And then this year, you know, he's running the football a little bit. You're going to have to monitor him as a defense because he will find an escape route and pick up some first downs that way. This is an offense that wants to go fast. Oh, they do. I, the coach Trickett, is, they brought him down from Sanford. That he's, a, he's a guy that wants to really press the tempo of the offense. So the conditioning will come into play and the number of reps that each player has got to be monitored with will come into play as well. As we talked with Coach Rick, the strength of their defense is going to be their front seven. Yeah, they, they're a powerful bunch. They got a lot of good pressure on the quarterback. They've got some experience there as well, but Miami's got an offensive line that's coming off a very good ball game as well. All right, this should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. All right, Miami and FAU, 6 p.m. kickoff at Hard Rock Stadium. Thanks so much for joining us. For University of Miami head coach Mark Rick and Don Bailey Jr., I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time right here on the Mark Rick Show.